I am Dr Samantha Williams, Reader in Social History and Academic Director for History at the Institute for Continuing Education. I teach a range of British social and economic history and I am a course director for the MST in History, which is a part-time master's course taught over two years. My research focuses upon poverty, disease and medicine. How did people in the past, before the advent of DNA testing, establish the paternity of children? For married women, children were generally held to be those of their husbands. There were two ways it might be proved otherwise. Firstly, it could be shown that the husband had not had access to his wife, such as being away at sea. And secondly, the adultery could be proven. The most pressing sort of case where paternity had to be established was for illegitimate children. Illegitimate children were to some extent without a father, and so legally securing fatherhood was important. It was important because illegitimate children could cost a good deal of money for local taxpayers to maintain them. But if the father could be found and made to pay, then this could prove a significant saving. This was particularly true between 1750 and 1850, when illegitimacy was very high. Our married mothers were asked at least three times to name a father. When they were pregnant, they had to swear the name of the father before two magistrates. Secondly, in labour, the midwife was legally bound to ask the name of the father, as it was believed that women could not lie when in great pain. Then once again, once the baby was born, the mother was asked a third time by the magistrates to name the father. Mothers would bring witnesses, such as their own mothers and fathers, to testify that their daughters had been courting a man for some time. The magistrates also asked if the couple had been having sexual relations nine months before the child was born. If the justices decided that he was indeed the baby's father, then he was ordered to pay the childbirth costs, the legal costs of bringing the case, and a regular weekly sum for the maintenance of the child, which could be for anywhere between seven and 14 years. The father was allowed to appeal. William Langstaff of St George the Martyr Southwark testified that he could not be the father of one child because of the woman's character, which was such that no modest female would be seen with her. Her house was the rendezvous for all the young men in the town. I've seen three or four in her bedroom at a time, and have known her being out all hours of the night with different men. She would give them liquor and then take them to her bedroom. However, magistrates were wary of such attempts to evade responsibility. This system worked remarkably well in the north of England where 80% of the costs were recovered from fathers. Whereas in London, the rate was significantly worse with only 20% recouped.